All right, so 2.4, it's uh, postulates and the diagrams. So first of all, what's a postulate means? So let's look into that, and then that way it makes more sense to you when you uh, kind of like understand, uh, try to understand this topic. So first let's look into the vocabulary of postulate, and also the another vocabulary we're gonna look at is like perpendicular lines and perpendicular to the plane. But we, you guys know pretty good like idea, like what's a perpendicular means, right? So what's a perpendicular means, Arjun? Like up and down. Like 90 degrees, like perpendicular, 90 degrees. So coming to the postulate means it's basically a rule in geometry. We think we are gonna take it like accepted without any proof. Like there is no proof for them. Like how do you get it? Don't ask me, but it is true. That's called postulate, okay? So the rule that is accepted, that is accepted without a proof. Okay, so without a proof is called postulate or there's another name it's called axioms. This is another name for that, okay? You could say postulate or axioms. So one of them is the same thing. It's like, there is a rule, but there is no proof for that. We'll, but we'll take it as a granted, okay? So I'm gonna put some uh, previous postulates or the axioms that as we used as a, use, as a rules. That's what we're gonna look at quickly. All right, now let's look into these postulates. So let's say the postulate number five, through any two points, there exists exactly one line. So what is this first one is? So let's go over each of them to make it more sense out of that. And, and also to make like more understanding out of this one. Postulate five says, through any two points, there exists exactly one line. Let's say I take a, a two points, one point here and then one point here. And uh, just tell me like how many lines can I draw through those two points? Okay. Through any two points there is just exactly one line. So one point like one? Just one lane. I, I can't draw more than one line passing through these points. So I can draw only one. That's it. Okay? So that's a postulate. And there is no proof for this, but I mean, proof is like, you know, there are theoretical leads, there's no proof, but it's, we observe it, you can see that. There's no other way I can draw any other line. So if I draw another line like this, but it's not passing through the other point, so it's not technically, it doesn't work. So, so that's what it is, basically, the first postulate number five. So the next one. It's at least two points. Hmm. A line contains at least two points. Let's say if I take a line, I mean, at least. If I want to draw a line, at least I need two points. Okay? Yeah. With the one point, I can't draw. I mean, I can draw a line, but I can't say, like, which line is correctly exact. I'm, I'm thinking on it. So, for example, if I draw a line like this, or it could be another line I can draw. It could be this another line. There could be another line, but which line are we talking about? Okay, to represent a lane or a line, uh, we need at least two points. So if I write AB line, line AB, then I needed two points for that exactly. Okay, so that's yeah. possible. Six. And then seven. If the two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point. So same thing again. So if I draw one line here, and then another line here. I can definitely say it's like they're intersecting at only one point, not at two points or three points or anything like that. Is it? Yeah. yeah. All right, so it's, that's basically. So even if you say like, okay, these lines are not intersecting, okay? But again, if I extend this one and then extend this one, <clears throat> they are going to intersect at only one point. That's possible it's seven. Next one through any three non-linear points, there exists exactly one plane. So we learn about the non-collinear point. Non-collinear means, what's a collinear means? 
collinear means like red point. <clears throat> collinear means lie on the same line. Okay, let's say if I take a line and then I have points A, B, C, they're all on the same line and then these are collinear points. <clears throat> okay, but if this one says through any non collinear points, that means they're not on the same line, they're on different places. Like this is one point, this is another point, and this is another point. So we can draw only one plane to it. Okay. Okay, so that's the another postulate we can take as it. And a plane contains at least three non collinear points. And three non collinear means like these two are the, let's say if I draw the line here, but the other one is not on that line. So they're not collinear. We can call as a non collinear points too. Okay. And then if two points lie on the same plane, then the line containing them lies on the plane. Let's see what does that means is let's say I take two points on this plane. And if I draw the line through it, obviously this line is also going to be on that plane only. Okay. Okay. And finally, if two planes intersect, then they intersect at a line. So this is another really, really important point or also a test question that I can say it. They ask you a simple question. If two planes are intersecting, what are they going to be for? Okay. So that's their question. So if the two planes are intersecting, where they, how they are going to cross? So just like it. I'm going to show you an example right here. So you can see that this notebook, right? So I have a two different planes. So two different planes. If I extend this one here, it goes like that, and this one goes like that, but they intersect at the line. Okay? A line that's they intersect. So that's another important point. When two planes are intersecting, then obviously they intersect at a line. But the two lines are intersecting, they're gonna cross at a point. Okay. Remember that? That's a really, really important question for the test. Or we can say it's like for the SAT, that's really big. Okay. Two lines intersect. Lines intersect at a point. But the planes intersect. At a lane, at a line. This is really important points because you will see a lot of questions on the SAT and the NACTs on this one. So these two are the conditional statements. Two lines, they're intersecting, then this. At two planes intersecting, then this. So you guys tell me which postulate is basically applied here. Look at those postulates. Okay, so. Um, or let me copy this. I'll put it right here so you can see it. So which postulates does apply for the A and which postulates does apply for B? Think about it. That's right. The first one is postulate 7 and the second one is postulate 11 because the first one is line intersecting and the second one is planes are intersecting. Okay, now let's look into these two questions and see which postulates does apply for it. All right, next one. So you guys understand three and four really well. So let's do the next one. So use the diagram to write an example for each postulate. So postulate six, what could be the next example? So let's look into the postulate six. The six says a line contains at least two points. So give an example for that. Let's see what postulate six says. So can you go okay, ahead? the postulate six says a line contains at least two points. Okay. Uh, 
Q. There you go. Yep, line Q. That's two points it has it. Very good. Yep, you guys are writing good too. Yep. Okay. That is true. When two lines are intersecting, they get crossed at one point. That is the point H. Very good. And then postulate eight says through any three non collinear points, there is exactly one plane. Now you need to look at it two or three non collinear points. J, uh, J, G, L. J, G, L. Yep, the non collinear points. All right. And then, yep, that's pretty good. So J, G, or L, and then the plane is M. Okay. That's what it is. Very good. You guys understand this one really well. That's good. It's kind of like when when you have a diagram, how can we interpret it? So that's just basically this point is. So it is really important, like when you're interpreting some information is given on the math question, and you need to know like which one to can I take it as granted, and which one I cannot take it as a granted. Okay. So if you look at it, all points are in a co-planner because everything shows on the same plane. And also angle A H B, A H B, and then B H D are linear pair because we know it's a straight line. Same thing as the vertical angles we can take. And the A H J D, they're all on the same line. So yeah, they're all collinear. And then next one is A D and the B intersect H. So it's already shows the information. So that's pretty good. We can take that as we can take it that as it is. So we can all, we can assume this is happening, but we can't assume, or we can't take a granted, or you can say right, right. We cannot take granted D, F, and E are collinear because G is here, F is here, and then E is here. So we cannot take that because they are not collinear. And B, F, and C, E, B, F is here, and then C, E here, they're intersecting. But we don't know. Okay, it doesn't say it, but we don't know, so we can't take it as like, oh yeah, they're intersecting. And also, you cannot say like, oh, they're not intersecting. We don't know, basically. Okay, and uh, the angles B H A, B H A, and then C J A, which is C J A. So these angles are same. We can't say that, right? We don't know because we don't we don't know they are parallel or not. Unless the question says yes, D, F, and C, E are parallel, then we can bring some other conclusions out of that. But when information is not given to you, you cannot assume this is happening. Are that clear? Yes? Yeah. Okay, good. The other big thing in the geometry, they give you some information we have to use that information and then kind of like a draw some some lines or whatever it is given to you to make a more sense to it okay to understand the problem and that is another important skill that you need to gain uh, during the geometry right now so that way when in the in the coming lessons or in the coming chapters you will get a lot of information you have to draw the picture. Sometimes they don't give you the picture. So you have to draw the picture. And from that, you have to draw the conclusions. So uh, I want you guys to read this question. Amar, can you read the question for me? Hmm. So the symbol right there, the squiggly lines, or is this congruent, okay? And in the lines, we can't say equal. So we have to use it congruent. Okay, go ahead and then draw and then see if you can draw it. Arjun Amar, both of you guys, you can use a space and try to kind of like try it. I'm going to spend the space there. Go ahead and come over with the, your drawings. It is pretty good. I like that. So this one, I mean, nothing wrong in this one when you think uh, draw this one. And always make sure you use a line. Uh, see, like for example, let me show you quickly. See, when you draw the line, make sure you put those arrows at the end because that mentions you, those are the lines. 
and you see this is TW, that's a, kind of like they're congruent, and it's telling you it's a line. So line means you have to put the arrows there. Okay, that's another important thing. Don't forget that. Otherwise it counts as a line segment. And when you put those points, TW and the WV, and I don't see that point where that goes. Because if you look at it, TV, it's a one line, and then PQ is another line, and then TW, and then WV. So it's basically, there's a point right here. So basically, it's the point right here, too. Okay. And then that's how you can see that it's there, intersecting lines. Good job. Arjun, read the question for me. Sketching, wait, sketch diagram showing x, y intersecting w, v at point t. So x, y congruent. Perpendicular, that's a symbol oh, for perpendicular. Oh, perpendicular with w, v in your diagram. Does y, t have to be congruent to t, v? Explain your reasoning. Okay, so think about it for a minute and then try to draw. Sketching means it's like basically you have to draw that picture see it's what what does it comes out of it so let's try that that looks good so yep you guys draw that one x y and the y is perpendicular so that's a symbol for the perpendicular so whenever they give you the information so yeah we're a bit more than happy to use that uh information and then apply that one to your diagrams too so interpret the diagram in three dimensions. So this is a three dimensional figure because you have the plane. Uh, which of the following statements cannot be assumed? So I'm gonna put the statements right now. And we need to tell which of the statements cannot be assumed from the diagram. It like cannot be assumed. So let's look at it one by one. So we can get a pretty good idea if the line, if the information is we can get it granted or not. So the first one is A, B, and F are collinear. Do you guys agree with that? A, B, and F are collinear. Okay. Can you check it? Is that, do you agree or not? Uh, a, B, A, B, F yeah. are collinear, yes, it is true. So that means, yes, you can assume it, that one is true. That's not right. The next one, E, B, and D <clears throat> are collinear. E is here, no. B is here, yeah, that's right, that's true. And no, we cannot assume this, no, we can't assume it, so we can't. Okay. This one we can. How about AB is perpendicular to plane S? AB is this, and then S is this. So what do you guys think? They give you the symbol right here. You see the perpendicular? So this is, yes, we can. Yeah. How about CT and perpendicular to T? C, CD is this, and T is here. Yeah. No. But can we take, but it is not given to you, okay? So when it is not given to you, like here, they give you that little line like this. That's a perpendicular line. When this, this symbol is there, that's a perpendicular. But it's not given here, so we cannot. We cannot assume this is, is given. And then AF is intersect BC. AF is this. And then BC here at a point B. What do you think on that? So if you look at it, they did extend that line, dot, 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 okay? And um, AF and, okay, AF is, this is AF. And then BC, BC is this line. And then they intersect at B. You can see that, right? So yes, we can. You guys understand that? Yeah? Okay, that was good. 
it's kind of like real world situations but again it's an example it's not really be used in the real world but it's a given example let's say if you look at these picture number 31 what postulates do you guys kind of like think let me put the postulates out there 32 is is number 11 I agree I agree because the first one the two lines intersect at a point that's good seven is right seven is good oops exactly okay so the postulate seven is good right good and then this one is does intersect at two lines so it's 11. good very good nice okay. so in this lesson basically what we learned is What's the postulates or or we, another name is called axioms, axioms or axioms, I don't know, whatever. So it's basically it's a rule, it's accepted without a proof. That's what it is, postulate means. There are a couple of a lot of postulates there. But as we move, as we see in the geometry, we see a lot of them. And uh, from the pictures, we can derive the what postulate is there, and also we can do the, the other ways too. And also we did for the given information, we were able to draw the pictures or the diagrams. And this is a really important skill that you need in geometry because most of them, not more, all of them, but like most of the questions, they give you information, but in, in order to understand and solve, you should be able to diagram. You need to be able to draw the pictures of that. That way it makes, makes more sense to you, okay? And we saw some real world examples too. Right. So that's good. Any questions on this? Okay.